Another project I'm working on is the hood bump stops. And I've never been a fan of the originals. To me, they always sit a little bit cocked. They don't, they rarely ever sit straight. And I don't have black ones. I know you can get them, but they've always got an off color underneath. So I decided to go to the Ford type hood bump stops. I got, this is the same as what's on my F-150, so I know what I was getting. So I'm going to put that there. I will have to file a rectangular hole in this area. I'm not crazy about that, but a little paint will cover it up. And then it'll be easier to adjust. And I think it'll look better, cleaner style than the original. I know, it's just me, but why not? So the hole took me five minutes to file. I just used a square file. I found these are the best files to have. <clears throat> the square and the rat tail, you can do wonders with just these two files. So I've got it opened up so that it fits it. If I shoved it in there, it would stay. Uh, first, I've got to put some paint in there just to clean up so it doesn't rust. But again, five minutes of work. I've converted it from this style to this style. Here's how the finished product looks. To me, it's a lot cleaner and you can easily adjust it. If I wanted to, I could always put a lock nut on here, but I don't know that it's necessary. Once the hood's pushing on it, it shouldn't be moving. But if I find there's any movement, I'll just put a lock nut down here. I've got my dash all tore apart again. But one of the things I'm doing, I actually did this years ago, but I've had a fuel leak issue internally where when you shut the key off, the fuel pump shuts off, and the fuel pressure will bleed back into the tank. And I have not been able to isolate it, even putting one-way check valves in. So I'm kind of hesitant to do away with this, even though I may have the problem fixed. So I, what I have is a fuel pump, an auxiliary fuel pump switch, I should say. So when I arm it and turn it on, it'll have a blue LED shining only works off the key but it will run the fuel pump as long as that switch is on and the key is on so if you want to shut it off you just kick it off but what that does for me is allows the fuel pump to run continuously while I'm trying to start the car otherwise your ASD relay will just run it for a second and if you don't have enough time to charge the fuel system again you won't have enough fuel pressure to fire your injectors. And that's the problem I ran into for years. Uh, you'd shut the car off, let it sit for a half hour and come back to it and it wouldn't start. And I always thought that I had a heat issue where it was vapor locking or something screwy was going on until I found out my fuel pressure was low. And the way I found that was when I put the fuel gauge in, fuel pressure gauge, then I was able to see that the gauge wasn't uh, reading enough pressure to run the injectors. And I chased wiring and everything before I finally found out that it was just leaking back into the tank. Because you can actually see the gauge go down after you shut the car off. So the way I'm getting around that, this time I am running a, a separate relay back behind my dash that that fuel pump switch will trigger. And then the wire, you can see all this. So the wiring is coming up into this connector that comes through the bulkhead connector on terminal 25. It comes in here and that green and black wire coming up is the wire I've got to get into. So I'm going to use my tap posi lock and I'm going to tap into that wire over to my relay and then whenever I turn the relay on it'll run power back. The way I was going to do it before, although I had done it before,
is I had the power distribution module here. I was running up into that and that's where I was catching the relay for the fuel pump and turning that on. But now I'm not going to have to run this auxiliary wire up. I'll actually keep it under the dashboard so it's a little bit neater hmm. and I can do away this. So here you can see how I've used the posi tap connector to tap into the fuel pump wire. And fortunately I have extra wiring harnesses from old cars having owned a couple lasers that we got rid of. So what I'm doing is grabbing number 15, which is the fuel pump, and that's the one that's circled here. So that is a bitch of a connector to get to, by the way. So if you ever have to get at that, that's up in the cowl in front of the driver's door. And there are a couple Phillips screws here you can take off and get that out, but it's right above the emergency brake pedal. And uh, all these are a real bitch to get apart. Just there's no room in there to work. So if you ever have a dash out, piece of cake. But if the dash is in place, good luck. Just thought maybe you'd like to see where it is in case you ever have to get to it. One of the things that I modified was the message display that shows doors open, hatch open, and the low fuel. And I did it using the open compartment. I forget what, don't you know what they call it. It's in the center of the dash. So I cut away a good portion of it and used the board piece from the upper message center. And I just kind of hot glued everything in place in here, foamed it. You can see I, I cut this all up to make a compartment so that you have a sunglass case. And from the front, uh, there's a little plastic panel on here that I painted the clear so you, all you see is what you need to see for the message center. So what this gave me some space that I could use up above and uh, worked out kind of nice. I, I'm happy with it. It looks like crap right now, but in the car you can't even tell it wasn't supposed to be this way. So everything's just hot glued in the place, and uh, the connector goes on the back. So you can see the connector that goes on the back, and then this sits down into its pocket. Sure it does. By putting the message center down here, that freed up the space I needed up on top for the gauges and for all the terminal connections in behind them. So I, I like the fact that it really I don't need that big pouch down in the bottom. So it made it more realistic in size and gave me a lot of room up on top that I could use. If you're looking for a spot for extra gauges, uh, it's not a bad one to, to come up with. One thing you do have to watch is with the terminal strips, if they stick out into the gauges too far, mine just clear. But you'll have to space that out a bit to match the dash. They don't sit flush back against these posts. They don't sit back against it, they stick out about a half inch so there's more room there than you think to mount this but I'm happy with it if you decide that you want to remove this pocket so that you can put a navigator up here or do whatever you want to do with it the way I do it is from the back side this pocket isn't really glued in really securely so they glue it in the corners and then on the bottom of it it's got some glue. So what I do is I take a Dremel and I cut inside or outside, however you want to look at it, this thick area. And what that will do when you get done is just leave the thick portion and then you can pry that off the dash. So to avoid doing any real damage, 
first cut this pocket out on the inside or this side edge and then try to pry this edge off and you'll have better luck. If you had a little acetone to get in there and work on the glue bond that would probably help too. I'm not going to show the whole process but I'll I'm just going to cut it and then show you how it will goes from there. So as I started to pull this away without doing any more cutting you can see that it's starting to come loose. So it's glued right here in the corner in the corner on this end and I'm assuming on the bottom lip there's a couple glue spots. But all I'm doing is just constantly working it without putting too much flex onto the flat panel and it's starting to break it away. The main thing you want to watch is that this is a weak joint. I've actually broken that off before. So be very careful around that area. But as you can see when you get done it just leaves a nice clean edge on the inside that will match right up to the navigator or whatever else you want to put up there for a panel. Making some more dash mods. One thing I've done is down here where all my wiring is coming through for these two switches. I broke out the bottom plastic piece. It was about three quarters of an inch high. So that gives me a lot more space for all these connectors to go sliding through. The other uh, see, last time we talked about the sliding switch for the power antenna that comes in to the right of the heater controls. This time I have put another switch to the left of the heater controls. And this is for the oil accumulator solenoid. So when I want the oil accumulator to flow into the engine, I hit this button and that energizes the solenoid and it stays open as long as that button's in. So there is enough space to get that right alongside the heater control. And uh, I also put quick connects on them, color coded one side, not the other. And what else did I do? Oh, the water heat, damn, the water pump control. I had said that I had this empty cavity in front of the shifter. Well, that's a good spot to mount the controller for the water pump. So these are just some mods that uh, hopefully we're getting this closer to completion. And a little clearance issue right here where this switch goes. I had to cut out a little cavity to the left of the heater controls. It's no big deal. Everything's fine. And the right side, I didn't have to do that. I can go underneath it with this wire. Definitely helped having all my terminal strips behind the gauges to go. So when I want my solenoid for the oil accumulator open, I just hit it and it's backlit. And then the slide switch the stereo I had running today that sounded really good. I was impressed actually. Uh, my neon lamps. Uh, when they're down, they're for sitting stationary and then when they're up they're driving lights. Doors are all open right now. That's why the back panel's lit. To finish this video off, I thought I would show one of the other panels that I had done and I removed the navigator from up on top and you can see the bottom. But right here is where I broke corner of the panel. So as I was saying, be very careful in that area. Don't like that it's so fragile, but there's not a whole lot you can do. I, I was able to melt some plastic in behind it and thicken it up a bit, but you've got a clearance issue you got to watch. You get it too thick and it won't go back in. So just a word of advice.